come off sort of this year of traveling to find myself and feeling like I was like a young person who was being cultured by the places she was living and experiencing places that were not the same as where I'd grown up. Hi, I'm Mackenzie Lee. I'm so happy to be here. La reconocida bestseller Mackenzie Lee, escritora de la guía del caballero para el vicio y la virtud, llegó a la feria del libro con una nueva historia, la guía de la dama para las enaguas y la piratería. I'm here at the International Book Fair, um, talking about my new book, The Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy, which I won't try and say in Spanish because it would be a disaster. Um, it is the second book in a series after The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, um, and I'm so happy to be here talking to readers about it and getting to um, sort of share it for the first time with, with Argentina. It's been crazy. Um, I It's so strange to me to be on the other side of the world from where I live and not only to like have people have the books and are reading them and know who I am and are filling auditoriums to hear me speak. It's very surreal and very cool and I, I feel very, very lucky to be here. So the Ladies Guide is narrated by the little sister of the main character from the Gentleman's Guide and her name is Felicity. Um, and in the first book, Monty, who's the, the main character of Gentleman's Guide, thinks Felicity is kind of a bore. Um, but actually you find out Felicity is, is really tough and cool and strong and actually has her act together, which Monty interprets as being very boring because he does not have his act together at all. Um, so the second book follows her. The second book is about her in, um, in England. She is determined to become a doctor and history is determined to not let her become a doctor because of sexism. Um, the 1700s and it's not great for ladies um, but Felicity is determined and she finds out that her best friend from childhood is marrying her all-time hero favorite doctor of ever and Felicity is convinced that if she can just meet this guy and pitch herself to him he's gonna help start her career if you can say anything real nice it's better not to talk at all I was, a, I was a student of history at university and I at one point wanted to be an academic and was very ill-suited to that for a lot of reasons. Um, but while I was studying, I was very frustrated by the fact that all of my sort of basic history courses were about straight white men making history and sort of perpetuated this idea that the only people who could do anything in history were straight white guys. And any um, women or queer people or minorities of any kind were sort of relegated to stories about how they were either um, abused or suffered great injustices or um, like women, we could talk about women when we were talking about women's suffrage and that was sort of the only time women appeared. Um, but in reality, I was finding sort of as I researched independently, I found that everywhere in history that there were white straight guys doing things, there were also women and queer people and minorities and disabled people doing those exact same things. But lots of those narratives have been lost for a whole variety of reasons. And sometimes that's because they were sort of erased from history by by their contemporaries. And sometimes it's because of us. And we get very we get very comfortable sort of repeating these same myths and these same stories rather than forging new territory. Um, and so I found all of these stories in history about about women and about queer people in the 1700s who had like fulfilled lives with the people they loved in spite of being being queer and uh, women who had careers and had jobs and were like taken very seriously in their profession and I wanted to write about those people as as the, the rule and not the exception. I imagine it would get popular is that no never in my wildest dreams I honestly wrote the gentleman's guide to vice and virtue thinking no one would ever read it I I thought it would just live on my hard drive I was like this is a book I am writing for myself I'm writing the book I want to read um, and so it's just gonna be silly and weird and tropey and it's gonna have all these like kooky characters in it and no one's ever gonna read it so it's fine um, and so the fact that it got published at all is so crazy to me and then the fact that it has has done so well and that so many readers have have loved it and responded to it is is incredible and I feel so lucky Better not to talk at all is my advice.
Las historias de Mackenzie Lee pueden ser tan descrestantes que incluso llegan ahora al universo de Marvel. Esto y más en un especial que preparamos para ustedes con Irene Chiquiar Bauer de la Feria Internacional del Libro de Buenos Aires. Nosotros nos vemos luego. Chao. Hi, I'm Mackenzie Lee, and where the culture is, there is Channel A.